punk never dies, and neither do the attitude or the vibes. <laughs> Welcome to your round of dozen music. We're today we're checking out the second EP from Badissi called Rocks in Your Pockets. This is a manic addition to their early discography and one that holds plenty of notes of that familiar underground pop punk and indie energy that was found on the Bluetooth speaker in your friend's basement the last time you went to a local show. This music is the equivalent of what it feels like when you get extra mozzarella sticks or you get broken up with in a Taco Bell parking lot. And it's overall a solid EP that deserves way more hype than it's gotten. And the fun part about reviewing this EP is that I get to take my time with it, and with it being an EP, shorter length overall, I get to talk about each song individually, and that's exactly what we're gonna fucking do. So let's stop wasting time, let's get into it. The introduction track is everything it needs to be. A slow burn into a firework display to set the mood. All slow and emotional until the singing comes in, and that's where the heat starts to build up. The lyrics here tell a potent story that only gets better when all the other musical elements come into play, just before the two minute mark. It's Chicago punk style vocals on top of raucous and intense percussion and guitar. This is really the best way to kick off an EP because it not only once again sets the tone, but it features both sides of Badesi. The calm mediation that comes before the storm and the typhoon itself that roars when it gets unleashed. I especially like the line towards the end that mentions the uh, the uh, EP's title, excuse me, like the rocks in your pockets, I'll bring you down. It feels very akin to something off of The Greatest Generation by The Wonder Years or a similar pop punk band from the early 2010s. Right after this multi-faced intro, we get my personal favorite track, He's As Good As Done. This song focuses more on that middle ground to higher ground level of pop punk with a definite edge. You could even call it pure punk if you really wanted to. Something about the vocal layers on the chorus just makes me want to tear up a pit at a basement show. We're just going back to that basement show over and over. It's tattoo worthy, these lyrics are, with callouts like, I wonder how many car crashes it takes to die. I don't want that tattooed on me. I'm literally currently trying to figure out how to get that line tattooed on me because it's so fucking good. I wonder how many car crashes it takes to die. Fuck, dude. The guitar on display here is straight and to the point with this in simplicity, which is a good payoff to the song's case with its being mainly an emotional lyrical pacing. That's not to say it's two chords overplayed, that's not it. There's a nice bridge and possible solo at the end, I'm not quite sure what constitutes as a solo within punk or pop punk at this music at this point, but it just pieces two things together and ties them up neatly before one final burst of energy and a call out to finish the song. But does the overall as a project that focuses on storytelling and getting its point across with sometimes blatant and catchy words and other times carefully woven verses that take their time with the delivery and the message. This isn't home anymore feels like the opening credits to a movie about self-discovery, equally fitting the aesthetic of a lot of different settings and emotions. So just picture this for a second. It's sophomore year and you're riding the bus to school. Your forehead is pressed against the cold glass window. And when the very Frank Iero inspired ending section comes in with phrases being thrown out like, I never wanted you dead. You're reminded of the rage and fire inside of you. All of those emotions, how tired you are, all of it. That sounds like a cheesy Netflix description, but I think it's the best way to sum it up. It's just really just a soundtrack to youth and vibrance. Speaking of Frank Iero influence or Iero, however you pronounce it, the appropriately titled LM Forever caps off the album with all the built up energy from the rest of the EP finally colliding and coming together in an ending to this release that fits the overall all over the pace vibe that the EP has been. Between being a project that's very much inspired by others in many different ways and being an album that perfectly captures young adult angst, this last claw to the dirt is a wonderful closer. I listened to this album essentially non-stop, off and on since it came out, having been a fan and thankfully somewhat of a friend to the person behind the scenes for a while. And it's honestly an honor to finally sit and be able to review it even if it's in quick fashion like right here. Outside of personal preference and hype, I truly and critically view this release as a stellar one that deserves listening. So, for that reason, this album gets an EP score of 4 out of 5, or an overall score of 8 out of 10. And that's your review. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Go give them a listen. They highly deserve it. Great person, great music, better pizza, Papa John's. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're staying hydrated. Have a great day.